Yo, it's me, it's me, it's the SCOTT, baby! Been on a while. So, only one name I have to mark down on here, and it's in the other category Beth Broderick, aka Aunt Zelda from Spring of the Teenage Witch. This is the last episode! Not really, there's a two part of the finishes off the series, but. I looked, and I looked, and I cannot find the full thing anywhere on YouTube, so. Unless someone uploads the whole thing in the future on the YouTube, or I find a way to get the DVD, because there's a DVD out there somewhere. This is it. And this one is probably the easiest one I have to do of all these, because I've seen this one a million freaking times, man. As mentioned before, I had the school spirit on a VHS that my sister probably erased. But this one, this one, my name is Evil. I had on a VHS and I watched it constantly. It was like a whole Saturday morning of stuff. This, City Guys, um, Digimon, all the stuff I watched back then. All on one tape and I would sit and I watched this tape constantly. I still have it somewhere, but it, as a result, this episode is the one I've watched the most. And as a result, I don't even think I even need to rewatch it, but I did because I wanted to just in case. So, this episode follows a character named Morgan, who is supposedly the nicest guy in the entire high school. He's got two friends, Jason and Ryan, and uh, one night they're at the carnival. The episode starts off with him screaming, and then. They, oh, another, forgot one. Is it a C for Kaylee Kugo? No, it's a K, hold on. Kaylee Kugo. Okay, so, yeah, so, so, the carnival, they're talking, and then they see one of their girls from school, Kristen, which Morgan has a crush on, and... They talk to her, and right away, she's really, you can really tell, she's a bitch. And I think that Kaylee Kuko is, who's the actress who plays her, is very good at playing that, Penny, very good at playing that kind of bitchy role. Or to say, a role, the role that has a kind of attitude. And she's great in this. So, he gets up the... The cojones to ask her out, and she just sort of rebuffs him, and she's like, "He's like, I was wondering if you want to go with me to Kyle's party." She's like, "Well, so basically, you're asking if I want to go out with you." And then Ryan's like, "Be nice, it's his birthday." She's like, "Really?" And she goes to give him a kiss, and she leaves her gum on his cheek, which causes him to run off. And then Ryan's like. Way to go. And he runs off. And then Jason stays behind for me and he's like, I'll see you tomorrow. Right from the start. I've seen this enough to catch everything. This right here, if it's the first time watching Pebble and Kitchen, this right here tells you there's something else going on between Jason and Kristen. And it tells you it right here. There's something but. And so she starts talking to her friend, Brittany. It's my sister's name. And... Uh, and they're talking about how he's the nicest kid in school and she's like it's an act and I'm going to prove it so also because I've watched this a million times it's easy to figure out what's going on when it goes on but one part so So, sorry, I had a little moment there. The next day at school, uh, you start, they're, they're walking down the steps and everything, and they're talking, and I guess now, uh, Jason and Kristen are a thing, and he's like, what happened? He's like, I swear, I asked her out after you asked. And then Kristen's like, he didn't, or whatever. And, uh, uh 
And he gets angry, he starts scratching his... I should mention, I forgot one. Uh, on the way out, they talk to this creepy lady, who's the same old lady from the uh, wrong number episode of The Haunting Hour. And she tells Morgan that he she sees evil in him. And shortly after, this is when this all starts, he wakes up, he's got a rash that he's scratching, and... Uh, and then I said that. And every time it, it acts up, something happens. Like, for instance, when it starts, the first time it happens, uh, Jason falls down the stairs. And Kristen says that Morgan did it. And that she saw him, Morgan push him. And then later during track, he's mad that Jason won and they're making fun of him and stuff. And he starts scratching. And Jason starts to sink into the, the sand or whatever. Now, when he goes to see the nurse, the nurse, you know, covers for this, saying that there was a, a, a pipe that burst. Well, yeah, but that doesn't mean that he would didn't pers burst the pipe when he used his powers. You know, because, you know, let's say uh, psychic uh, kids or teens, whatever, when they get powers, they can't control it. And this anger really usually brings it out, like Carrie or something like that, and... This really plays out as sort of a male version of Carrie until you get to the twist. Which is not really a twist if you paid attention to the dialogue. So, after this, Ryan's now against him too. Jason was already against him after the push down the... After he fell down the stairs. But now Ryan's against him because he claimed to have seen... Morgan do this, which... All you would have saw was... And that's... Barely proof... Anything happened, to be honest. <laughs> like, unless you saw him physically pushing him down into the thing. They even claimed that it was a, a burst pipe that happened. So, what? And then the skeleton falls over. When this kid starts picking on him, he's evil, he's evil. And the skeleton falls over. And the lady, you know, excuses, oh, it's okay. That, that, that thing falls over at least two... There's ten times a day. You can believe how many times it would fall over. And so... He decides he's had enough. He goes back to the... Uh, he goes back to the carnival to see the lady. And she takes off the old lady mask from before. And reveals that she's... <clears throat> um, Beth Broderick. Basically, is who it is. And he asked why she said he was evil. And she's like, it was just an act. It was just a thing. She was joking. And then he starts to act up again. And... And the stuff starts to break and pop and go nuts. And he goes running out. And he retreats the next day. He's sitting at the lunch. And his own business when Kristen comes in. And she basically confesses to him that she was behind all this. And then he starts to itch again. And he starts to realize that it's her perfume that he's allergic to. Which... Sort of kind of makes sense, but not really. Because when he first started talking to her, he didn't have the rash. I mean, it started to affect him afterwards, but would it would an allergic reaction affect you after that person left? I don't know, because it didn't start affecting him until the next day. I'm sure Kristen was around when it happened, but he woke up with the rash. And if it was her perfume... Wouldn't his cheek have a rash on it because she sort of kisses smooched him? And, you know, perfume goes all over you. I don't know. I don't know. And she gets angry and her power is unleashed and they see that it's her. So it was Kristen the whole time. Because he, he points out every single time stuff happened. At the... It's you. With the stairs. On the track. At the carnival. You were there every time. Do you notice one time he didn't say? Because it was brushed off as, oh, this happens all the time. In the nurse's office. Remember that. So, Kristen runs off. Everybody claps for Morgan because he's still the nicest guy. They make up. His friends make up. And it cuts to a few months later. Where now he's running for class president. Against a bitchy girl. Who basically, you know... Apparently her hair is her thing. And she has a bitchy remark to him. And then... 
uh, her hair starts to come out and she starts screaming. And I love this part. I love this part because like uh, he, he he starts walking towards his friends and they're like, "You talk to her? Yeah. What what did she say?" And then she screams and he's like, he's scratching his head. He goes, "Not much." And he walks away and he shows he still scratch himself. So that's how it ends. So there's one incident in which Kristen was not around when the powers happened. It was dismissed as, oh, this thing falls over all the time. That was in the nurse's, uh, the nurse's station when the skeleton fell down. And it shows that he might have these powers too. But, and then this at the end demonstrates he does have the powers. And so... What? It's hard to kind of... I've, I've seen this a million times. I've tried to figure out if it was Kristen the whole time or if Morgan had something to do with it. They film it in a way that makes you question whether or not he did it or not. Because they film it as he's scratching himself and he's got an evil look on his face every time. But then Kristen admits to doing it. So did she really do it? Or is she doing it... Was she trying to piss him off to where he'd freak out on her? Or, you know, but like I said, from the beginning, when she says he's not as nice as you think he is, and I'm going to prove it, that and then stuff starts happening, even though it looks as if he's doing it because she said that line, it's clearly she's doing something. And yeah, she has psychic powers, I guess, but then so does he because at the end. And it, it doesn't make sense at all. It really doesn't make any sense, and it kind of does. If you take out Kristen revealing that she did it, it would make sense. But then when you have her, she reveals that it was her, then how he still has powers? Damn it. I messed up. I messed up because I forgot to do a thing. You know who directed this episode? Potsy, that's right, Potsy's back. I was, I had a whole intro plan where I was gonna go, guess who's back? Back again. Potsy's back. Tell a friend. That's right. Potsy directed this one too. And he did, he, did, he did a good job because, like I said, it was filmed in a way where it looked like it was Morgan that was doing it. But then it's revealed it's Kristen and that she was there every single time, but other time in a nurse's office. And if they didn't add on that twist at the end, I think it would be you know easy to easy to dismiss that oh it just fell over. But with that twist at the end, it makes you think: Did he knock over that skeleton, or was it just an accident? Who knows? Who knows? But this episode obviously is gonna get a great because obviously I love this episode. I've seen it a million times. So it gets uh, great. There we go. So with that, we've finished up all of the Nightmare Room episodes that I can do because I can't I can't find the full two-parter. There's part one and then the two parts of part two. Like there's part one of part part one of episode one and then both parts of episode two, but the missing. And they're still missing one little part, so. <clears throat> but this has been actually an interesting, uh, you know, idea for me to go through. Eventually, I think I'll do a ranking, but I really don't want to do it without Camp Nowhere. And I've only seen it once, vaguely. And I think it was only one of the parts, to be honest. So, I don't know. But... Excuse me. I, yeah, I really enjoyed going through this. I hope you enjoyed going through this with me. Um, yeah, so what are your thoughts on this episode? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I've been Scotty. See you in the next one.